This video is sponsored by bootcamp.com. Check it out for INBDE prep and use coupon code MENTALDENTAL for 10% off. Hey everyone, Dr. Ryan here, and welcome back to our video series on ethics. In this video, we're going to talk all about autonomy. So patient autonomy is the first principle of ethics that we'll discuss, and it's also referred to as self-governance. This principle expresses the concept that professionals have a duty to treat the patient according to the patient's desires within the bounds of accepted treatment and to protect their confidentiality. What this means is we should do what the patient wants within reason because we know more about dentistry than they do. There are some things they may want that either is not possible or would do more harm than good. And this is where standard of care comes in, meaning if the patient wants to have their root canal treatment done without a rubber dam placed because that's just more comfortable for them, we have to inform them that that's not the standard of care. You need to have this rubber dam in place to prevent unwanted bacteria from penetrating into that pulp space. So under this guidepost of the profession, the dentist's primary obligations include involving patients in treatment decisions in a meaningful way, considering their needs and desires. And then the second half of this is safeguarding the patient's privacy, which we'll talk more about in a little bit. So for that first half, the dentist should inform the patient of the proposed treatment, benefits, risks, and any reasonable alternatives in a manner that allows the patient to become involved in their treatment decisions. And this is what we call informed consent. So let's explore the concept of consent a little bit more in the next slide. So we have two main forms of consent to secure as dentists. And the first one is called general consent. The second is informed consent. So each one requires a separate doctor-patient discussion where the sole topic of the discussion is the consent. And the granting of consent requires the patient to intentionally give the dentist approval to do something. Obtaining general consent means the patient has given you permission to proceed with simple things like exams, cleanings, local anesthesia, minor restorative procedures. It releases you as the dentist from being charged with battery and allows you to bill the patient's insurance company. All other procedures, the majority of them in fact, require informed consent, which is a process that's a little bit more involved that educates the patient about the treatment plan you're recommending. And most states in the US also require a separate form to be signed along with this. Here are all the things that should be included in that important conversation. The dental problems that you've observed, the proposed treatment, benefits and risks of that treatment, any alternative treatment options, including no treatment at all, and benefits and risks of alternative treatment, including not treating the condition. So note that financial costs of treatment are not necessarily included in this conversation. Also, the patient should be given an opportunity to ask questions about any of these elements here so that they're adequately informed and can make the best decision for themselves, again, relating back to their autonomy or self-governance. And this is worth mentioning as well. For a minor under the age of 18, informed consent is required from the parent or legal guardian since the patient cannot legally give consent. Now, there are some exceptions to this that vary from state to state. Some examples include a minor who is pregnant, married, a parent themselves, or actively serving in the military, or in an emergency situation, all of whom can provide consent in certain states. So the second half of autonomy, the second code of professional conduct, involves patient records, x-rays, photos, and other personal information. So this CPC is broken up itself into two halves, each reinforced by an advisory opinion. So the first has to do with furnishing copies of patient records. 
So a dentist has the ethical obligation on request of either the patient or the patient's new dentist or specialist to provide all records that would be beneficial for future treatment of that patient. They must do so gratuitously or for a nominal cost. That means either for free or for no more than, let's say, $20. So this includes sending physical or digital copies of x-rays, and this ethical obligation exists whether or not the patient's account is paid in full. For the second half, dentists are obliged to safeguard the confidentiality of patient records. So under this code, dentists shall maintain patient records in a manner consistent with the protection of the welfare of the patient. Basically what this means is you're not going to have patient photos lying out on the table or a computer screen that's unattended and unlocked with protected health information or PHI exposed for just anyone to see. By the way, the majority of this code aligns with the HIPAA privacy rule, which states that dentists must protect the privacy of protected health information, and it sets limits and conditions on the use and disclosure of such information. And this is where things get a little tricky under patient autonomy. So some jurisdictions of the country permit all protected health information to be shared between health professionals without patient authorization, as long as it's necessary for treatment purposes and it's safely and securely communicated orally or in writing. Some jurisdictions, however, do not allow the transfer of sensitive information like HIV seropositivity, chemical dependency, or sexual preference. So unless you're 100% sure that your jurisdiction allows the transfer of all patient data, the treating dentist should seek permission of the patient before releasing these data. And if the patient refuses, then the treating dentist has to consider terminating the dentist-patient relationship if transmitting that data is necessary for their dental care. So a summary of patient autonomy. We have informed consent, informing the patient about proposed treatment, risks, benefits, and alternatives, and involving them in their treatment decisions. We send records to a patient or dentist when asked, and we safeguard the confidentiality of patient records. And all of this points to respecting the patient. We respect their wishes. If a patient has sensitive information they don't want to be shared, and it isn't absolutely necessary to share, then don't share it. Under the principle of autonomy, the dentist's primary obligations are to involve patients in treatment decisions in a meaningful way, valuing their needs, desires, and abilities, and safeguarding their privacy. That's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Please like this video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe to this channel for much more on dentistry. If you'd like to support me, please check out my Patreon page. And thank you to all of my patrons for their support. You can unlock access to my video slides to take notes on and practice questions for the board exams. So go check that out. The link is in the description. Thanks again for watching everyone. I'll see you in the next video.